everybody, this is Praxis, and as you can see, I'm in a very different sort of location than you usually see me in most of my videos. I'm out on the ocean, uh, off the coast of Rhode Island, and this is the first in a three-part series that I'm doing on a different kind of bugging out. You can already guess, I'm sure, what the type of bugging out is on a boat. Usually when people talk about bugging out in the preparedness community, they're talking about going off to a forest location, you know, off in the wilderness somewhere or out in the desert, uh, and their bug out vehicle is usually like a car or a truck, something with big tires and a, a mean sounding name uh, that they're going to use to get to this location. Well, bugging out on a boat with the boat itself being your bug out location is a very different approach to it. There are some definite pros as connected with other types of bugging out. There are also some cons. And in this series, I'm going to talk to you about what all those uh, pros and cons are, go over some different options that you have, uh, and, uh, and just raise this as a possibility for certain people. Just to let you know my experience with this, uh, my dad, uh, who you might have seen in some of the Project Homestead series, he helps me sometimes with the build and everything. He's a multi-talented man, and one of his talents is sailing. He's been sailing for many years. This is his boat, uh, and he has his captain's license. He knows an awful lot about it, and um, uh, I've gone out with him on a, you know, a couple of his journeys. The longest I've ever been out on the water is like two or three weeks, so I have a fair bit of experience, but that said, you know, I don't really remember the name of anything. I know often sailors can be pretty persnickety about, uh, you know, the exact precise name for things, but it doesn't really bother me that much whether you know the name for something as much as whether you know how to use it and what it's good for. Of course, if you want to communicate that to someone else, it can be a problem if you don't know names. So I apologize in advance if I get some of the names wrong, but in this first video, what I wanted to do was give you a tour of this type of boat. This is a catamaran. It's a double-hulled boat, which means it has uh, two hulls. There's one over there, and there's one behind me right over here. Uh, the advantage of a double-hulled catamaran kind of boat versus a single-hull boat is they tend to be more stable because you're spread out more over the water, uh, and uh, there's, there can be some more living space on the inside of it. This is cabin area uh, right over here. So it's kind of a bug out sort of uh, a situation if you want to be living off the water. They have some definite advantages uh, to that. Uh, I, in this first video, I just want to give you just sort of a, a quick overview of this boat. Uh, and then in the second video, I'm going to be doing an interview with my dad about uh, some of those pros and cons that I talked about, about you know some of the positives and some of the negative aspects about uh, you know using a boat as kind of an SHTF sort of bug out scenario for yourself. And in the third video, if you're interested in this type of thing, we're going to talk about like what are some of the ideal types of uh, vessels that you could have. So why don't we start right up here. I already mentioned it. it's a double-hulled catamaran vehicle. Uh, it has these trampolines that kind of span between the two hulls. These are great because you can actually walk on these. They just give you some extra, you know, moving around space so, you know, you're not so claustrophobic on a small area. Uh, this is kind of the main cabin of the boat. You can walk right on top of it. Everything on a boat usually has handholds everywhere and steps. And there's some steps right here. I'm going to go right up. And you can see right on the top here, uh, this is the mainsail. This one's kind of a pain in the butt to open, so we don't have it open today. you got to take off this covering, and then when it, you know, it goes all the way up, and then when it comes down, you got to kind of fold it up. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, whereas the, the jibs are much easier, so we've been using the jibs today. Uh, again, I don't remember the <laughs> jibs, so my apologies for that. we got some solar panels behind us. This one, some of the electronics and stuff on here. Uh, this boat can be out for extended periods. It can be out on the water, uh, you know, uh, where it's just salt water, and if you need to have drinking water, there's desalinization equipment on this boat so that, you know, you can be out for extended periods and you're not going to run out of uh, drinking water. I'm going to come over down this side, on the other side. Of the right here are most of the controls. Uh, you have a lot of your navigation equipment here. Uh, fishing is a great way of self-sufficiently getting food when you're out on the water. We'll be talking about that in some of the interview series. Uh, and there are places where you can just kind of slide the fishing poles. In fact, here's one they got ready to go right here. Place where you can just slide the fishing poles in and you can have them trawl as you're moving from one place to another. Did you guys catch anything? Yeah, a rock. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rockfish. Actually, it started with a fish, but it, it got uh, snagged. Okay, well, it sounds like you might have a chance anyway. All right, so let's go down inside the cabin here. And in here, uh, this is uh, sort of a seating area. There's a kitchen. I think on a boat it might be called a galley. 
<laughs> is it called a galley on a, on a boat? The kitchen? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I got that one right. Uh, I was in here a lot because I was... I, I think I was preparing most of the food uh, while we were on that trip. There's some important devices here in the kitchen, which are important on any kind of a, uh, a you know, kind of a bug out or uh, extended stay vehicle. I'm gonna flip the camera around so I can just uh, shoot this stuff while I go. There's a uh, refrigerator here, and a refrigerator is a great thing to have on a boat because it allows you to store things like fruits and vegetables very easily so you can get nutrients while you are, you know, out and uh, on the sea because you're not necessarily going to have easy access to vitamin C. You know, you always hear the stories of the sailors getting scurvy. So refrigerators are great uh, to, to have while you're out there. There's a little stove here where you can do cooking, microwave, all sorts of other stuff up there. You notice a lot of these um, countertops, they have these edges to them. So things, you know, when you're moving around, they're not going to roll off uh, on the, off to the side. Oop, excuse me. Uh, sink here for getting access to some of that fresh drinking water that I mentioned that the desalinization equipment uh, can provide on this boat. More refrigerators over here. Like I said, that's a very important item uh, to have on a boat because, again, it gives you access to all sorts of things you can't necessarily catch out in the wild. Uh, up here we have, like I said, kind of the seating area where you just have a place you, you can, you know, look at maps, charts, whatever you got to do, you can do it here. And just off to the left is a navigation uh, station here. This has communications equipment, uh, a navigation computer. I remember when I was doing the crossing, I was always looking at this. I would do uh, shifts at night where I would be solely responsible for not crashing the boat. And uh, one of the things that you can crash a boat into is large tankers. So uh, we would frequently be checking this if we ever saw a light on the horizon because uh, a lot of large boats will transmit you know, who they are, where they're headed, what their, their speed is and everything. So you get all that kind of information so you could avoid potential collisions. So this was a pretty important uh, station uh, in the nighttime especially. Why don't we uh, kind of head down over here into some of the living areas, which are down inside of the hulls of the boat. So let's hop in here. And we're going to curve around this corner. It's a little claustrophobic in here, but it works. Uh, up over here, you can see there's a bed over here for a sleeping area. Lots of storage kind of tucked into the, the walls here. You can see out the window. Uh, presently my feet are below water level. So we're, we're below the water level here standing in here. More storage area down in here. We're going to move kind of towards the back of the boat, which I believe is called aft. <laughs> All right, and right here we've got a bathroom, which I can open or not open. Yeah. So a bathroom with the toilet, also on a boat called the Head. We've got a sink over here. So just a small little bathroom. Just across, actually, behind this was another place that has a shower. This is where I would usually clean up. Usually on a boat you're having uh, mostly salt water on yourself. So you mostly just be wanting to wash off the salt water. This little window here opens up and it kind of sees between the two, the two hulls. If you recall, there were the two hulls of the boat. So we're looking across at the other hull from right here. So we'll, we'll pull out of this bathroom, cross back past that main area again to the, the aft part of the boat. There's a sleeping area. In fact, this is this right here was my bed when I was uh, working on the crossing. Uh, other bed there, more storage area. Here's me over here. And let's uh, cross over to the other side. Go right across the main area. So we're walking over water right now. It's under our feet and now down into the other side. And this is very similar to what we just saw. Just a, another bed area, a little bit of a larger bed. We'll kind of flip around to this side. Lots of storage space, very important. Uh, these uh, cupboards here were used as kind of, well, this one was used for clothing. Obviously there's hangers up there. Uh, this, this cupboard here, I recall we used as a pantry for food. And it's important to have lots of food provisions when you're on a boat. You can catch fish, but you can't, bag, you can't catch a bag of onions or a, a bag of potatoes out in the ocean. You can get sea cucumbers, though. Uh, that's an animal, by the way. That's not a plant. <laughs> uh, here's a, another toilet. Loving the shots of toilets. And a larger, a larger bathroom in here with sink and all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to pop back up top here. And there's one other thing. I want to show you guys right over here, just behind me. 
Uh, and this is a station that has uh, all the electronics and everything that uh, runs the desalinization equipment, all that kind of inf information. What is it, River? We caught a fish. We caught a fish. Let's go check the fish out. Um, yeah, we just let go. Oh, well, that isn't as exciting. Uh, <laughs> That's good for you, though. What kind of fish was it? Um, it, it kind of looked like the hair one. Oh, okay. Maybe a sea robin. Maybe. Okay, cool. All right. So anyway, in this series, uh, we're going to be uh, talking all about the idea of what would it be like if you wanted to have a boat. It doesn't have to be a, one like this. In fact, this is overkill boat. My dad is kind of thinking of selling it because it's just it's too much. It's too much money for him right now. It's it's a lot of work. We're going to talk about a lot of the surprise work that you wouldn't necessarily think about as being. Uh, you know, something that comes up if you own a boat. I mean, some of it's obvious, but there are all sorts of like kind of su surprise expenses and things that uh, would be important to know if you were ever thinking about getting into a boat like this or even a boat smaller than this. We're going to go over all that stuff in this series because bugging out to sea is, um, there's a lot to be said for it. There's definitely a lot to be said for it. I know I'm working on my homestead that's in the forest right now, but after I'm done with that, I think this might be a plan that I might like be thinking about possibly trying to to work on for my future as well. So I'll bring you a little bit along on that journey where we're going to have a real interview with a real captain, again, my dad, uh, find out about all his experiences uh, and talk about them through the lens of using this as a way of securing the safety of yourself, your family, people that you care about out on the open ocean if there was ever a collapse event. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.